All right, good morning, folks. Um, as many of y'all know, um, uh, recently Tandy Leather has picked up our line of, uh, of templates that we make and patterns that we make. Um, and so they've asked us to maybe create a couple of them that are just for them, um, that we at Makers Leather Supply will not uh, sell to anybody else to include in our own store. Um, so this morning we're going to do a couple of videos on um, the, the patterns that we've created just for Tandy. If you want these templates, you have to go to a Tandy store or to their website um, uh, because that's the only place you're going to find them. Um, so all that being said, Janie Sue uh, hooked me up pretty good and um, I'm not properly dressed for the occasion, so give me just a minute. All right. Got my shiny new shirt on that Janie made for me. And uh, when I'm wearing one of these shirts in one of our videos, then you'll know that whatever I'm making, you'll only be able to find over at a, at a Tandy store or on their website. So, um, today's video, we are going to make what is known as the Madison crossbody bag that I left way over here. Um, small handbag, uh, well, not really a handbag, it doesn't have handles on it. Um, it has a shoulder strap on it to wear as like a crossbody. It uh, features a zip up little corner pocket right here. And also the main body of it zips open. It's full of paper to give it some volume here. Should have taken that out already. Um, but it's just a plain bag on the inside. I don't have any, um, there's no special pockets or anything inside of this one uh, or the one we're gonna make today, but that could easily, easily be added if that's something that uh, you wanna add. And I'll show you where to do that. Um, other than that, it has two little one-inch D-rings, and it has a strap um, for, for, uh, for, again, wearing over the shoulder or as a, as a crossbody. Um, it was more designed to be a crossbody just because of its size and shape. Uh, this is just, unfortunately, I'm a guy and trying to envision, you know, what would a woman want to carry. Um, luckily, I do have a few females that work here that they help me with those things <laughs> to get things approved. So anyway, this is what we're going to be making today. Um, the template is uh, pretty easy. Um, it consists of three main pieces. This is one of our famous little puzzle pieces. When you put the two together, now you've got your gusset. All right. Um, so yeah, we're going to get on it. Um, the entire bag can be made out of, uh, say, four to five ounce uh, leather. I'm going to bring this down because you don't need to see me. You need to see my work. Um, so the entire bag can be made out of like four to five ounce leather. Um, I'm going to mix, uh, I've got this, all kinds of stuff in the way here, I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to mix this, uh, it's like an embossed bison that we have um, available to us here. Uh, it's, it's a four to five ounce and I'm going to use a little bit of um, just russet colored veg tan. Um, I think the color combination is pretty nice, but the the uh, the video is not really picking up the best or uh, the most accurate um, color on it. Anyway, uh, so we have a few pieces to cut out. The main body pieces right here. Um, when you cut, uh, it says to cut. Uh, this is piece one of three. They're the side pieces. Cut three of them out of four to five out. So we're going to cut them out of our main color of, of leather here. Now, when it says cut out three of them, you only have to do this slit and this, uh, this uh, oblong area here out of one of them. Um, that's for that one zippered pocket. The others, you're just going to do the outside piece there. All right. So we will bust out the scalpel here, and um, I'll cut one of them on camera, and then I'll pause the video so that you don't have to watch me um, make a bunch or cut a bunch of the same thing over and over. So I've got a brand new scalpel blade here. I always start with a fresh blade because, well, they're too cheap not to. And I don't like sharpening, so scalpels are fun. All right. So um, using any kind of an embossed or even a real bison leather or anything like that, one thing you do want to check for is your pattern of the the you know all these lines and everything that are in the leather you want to make sure that they um are all uh 
uh, kind of the same. Um, in, in, in a real uh, bison or buffalo hide, you'll have areas where this is really tight and small, and then you'll have areas where it's, it's really big. And, and you do want them all to kind of match on your, your project. It's just one of those things that um, people, it'll be one of those that when people look at it, they won't be able to really place their thumb on what's wrong with it, but there's something wrong. And, and that's what it is, is those, those green patterns aren't matching up. So I'm going to go ahead and cut one of these out all the way around the outside. And like I said, I'm going to pause the video to, to cut out two more of them. And then when I come back, we'll cut these other parts out of, uh, out of one of them. But I'm just taking my scalpel and going right around the template, always making sure that I'm pressing firmly on the template so that it doesn't move. Um, like all of our templates, you can take the paper off of the back of this and make it um, translucent where you can see through it. It will still be blue, but you can see through it. And uh, it helps you to find um, blemishes on your leather and stuff like that for when you're trying to place the template, you know, where you're wanting to cut it out. I think that got it. All right, so that got the first one. So there's what we're looking at right there. And again, I'm going to pause the video and I'll, uh, I'll cut out a couple more of these and then we'll be right back. All right, so I got my three um, side pieces cut out. One, two, and three. And before I uh, move on to showing you the, um, the zipper pocket and all that stuff, I'm going to go ahead and cut the rest of my pieces out of this so that I can get this off my workbench. Um, so here we have the 2A and 2B. Um, these are gusset pieces. These add up to about 20 inches, uh, but I'm actually going to cut it a little bit longer, um, maybe 22, 23 inches or so. I always cut my gusset pieces nice and long, and then I trim them off after I'm done with all my uh, skiving and folding and fun stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is, I'll just start cutting up here. And you can always make your gusset wider if you choose to. Um, but I just thought that this was a nice width for this small bag. Alright, so I'm going to cut down three sides of this thing. And then I'm just going to slide it up some and keep on cutting. And that's how I'll extend it just a little bit. I know my hands are in the way, but once again, i got to keep this template from moving on me. So This is also the same width as our rulers, so uh, if you don't like the two-piece thing, you can use one of the 18-inch rulers if you have one. All right, so again, I'm going to add about three inches or so to it. And I'm going to cut it out. And then I'm going to do it again because I need two of them. I need one for the top part, one for the bottom part. All right, so there's one of them. And we'll do all that again. All right, and again, I'm going to move it up just a little bit, a couple of inches. Doesn't have to be the exact same length as the other one because all we're doing is just creating some extra space to do what we want or need to do here.
finish that little corner there. All right. Now, I can put this piece of leather away and get it off my table. Okay, now, um, like I said, I'm gonna use a little bit of russet leather uh, just as some kind of accent pieces. So, I'll go ahead and cut those out too. Um, one of them is the, uh, the pocket gusset. Uh, I just thought it would be neat on this pocket here when you open it that it's a different color right there. Just for the heck of it. Why not? So when you close it, you don't see the other color. And then if you make the strap out of um, the same color, uh, then it just really kind of comes together. It looks nice. So we need to cut one of these. Um, it says out of four to five ounce leather, but honestly, this is like two to three and that'll be just fine. Um, four to five is more of the max on this piece. Okay, got that cut out. Um, actually, I threw that over there a tiny bit prematurely. Again, we have to cut out some uh, something to hold our little D-ring, and I'm going to make that match this because it's just a small accent cut, uh, piece. Um, I'm going to use one-inch D-ring, so I'm just going to cut me a little one-inch wide strip out of this right quick. Uh, this is one of our uh, centering rulers. It is exactly two inches wide with a, a line running down the center. So if I, uh, let's see if I've got one that the paper's already pulled off of, there we go. So that line, or the grid line there is uh, one inch wide. So if I want to cut this strap one inch wide, then I will take this thing, line up my, uh, that bottom grid line there, and uh, now I'll cut me a one inch little strip. Okay, now for now, I've got what I need out of the russet piece. So now we're going to go back and um, I told you we we're going to figure out where to cut or how to cut uh, these areas out of one of these. Um, I would take and find the prettiest one, you know, if you have some that's not perfect or whatever. Um, one of these is going to be on the inside. Like the only of it you'll see is when you open up that little pocket um, because that pocket truly separates the bag. That pocket doesn't just lead to the main body. Um, so if you have one that has a big scar or a brand or something like that that you really don't want on the outside of your project, you can use that for, for that piece. Um, but I would choose the prettiest one of them for this, uh, for what you're going to cut this out of because this is going to be the outside that everyone sees. The, the back side of it is going to be up against the wearer's body. So it's just one of those things. If you have one that really stands out as being nicer than the others, then you should use it for this part. i got rulers everywhere. All right. So I'm going to get out my punching board here because we're about to do some hole punching. Um, but what I'm going to do is set my template back on here. All right, I'm going to take my scalpel and run that line right there. And then I'm just going to mark the ends of this uh, so that I can punch them with a hole punch. And then I'll go ahead and scalpel the, the top two there. I'm not going to use my hole punch in the template because I can promise you that this is about a half an inch. And my half an inch hole punch will definitely crack uh, the template. And we don't want that. Um, it will set on there real nicely. You can tell they're the exact same size, but it wasn't made to, made to actually go through that. So I'm going to cut the bottom zipper line and the top zipper line, knowing that that punch will round those corners for me. Um, if you don't have a corresponding punch, you can cut them with a scalpel, but the punch will make a nicer, cleaner hole. And then this little um, cut here, I'm just going to cut. 
cut right down it, making sure that I go through the leather well. All right. So here is what that leaves me with. Better not lay that on my mouse. I might accidentally stop the video. Um, here's what that leaves me with. All right, and I did. I, I forgot exactly what I said I was going to do. Um, I got to mark that. So I've just got a little scratch all here, and I'm just going to mark where those uh, hole punches should end. And you could easily see it from the cut lines, but why not put it back on there and mark it right? Okay, half inch hole punch. There's one. Um, I will say this, when you're done with that part, see right here, I can see where that hole punch was, was used. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ruler or any kind of straight edge and I'm going to set it up there and I'm just going to lightly trim that so that you can't see that because to me it's, um, takes away from the professionalism of the entire project. Um, so if it's in your power to just trim it down, you can do that and again, you make a nicer project. And I'm just going straight across with it, straight to the other one. All right, and then right down here, I also have a little spot where that's still connected and I'm just gonna take my scalpel and cut that off so that it looks like the one on the template. There we go. Now it matches the template. And I can get this cutting board out of the way. All right. Um, so we need to do some skiving. All right. We need to skive completely around um, all four sides of all sorry we need to skive completely around all four sides of all three of these and then we need to skive down the sides of both of our gusset pieces as well all right and then we're about to turn one of these gusset pieces into our top zipper piece so we will uh, we'll discuss that after the skiving is done um, you can hand skive this. Uh, a lot of the time that depends on the leather um, as far as its uh, ease of use. Um, I, I do have an NP4 uh, Cobra Skiver here, which I also know that Tandy's selling nowadays. And um, I'm going to elect to use that just to save myself the, the trouble and time. Um, so yeah, I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna pause the video and then all I'm gonna do is spin the camera around and I will move my Skyver over here to the camera as opposed to moving the camera and computer over to the Skyver. So give me just a second. All right, so here we are. Um, I just spun the camera around and uh, pulled my Skyver machine up to the, the back side of my tooling bench here. Um, I'm going to show you how this thing uh, works and how amazing it is, especially if you do much bag making and stuff. Um, I know I've featured this in one or two of my own videos, uh, but since this one's for Tandy and they're selling this thing too nowadays, I figure I'll help them out and show it off for them too. Um, so, uh, adjustments on this thing are really easy. This is the blade. It's called a bell skiver because the blade's shaped like a bell. There's a little uh, roller ball in there that feeds your material through to that blade while the blade spins, and that's how it skives. Um, I've got a scrap piece of the leather I'm using because I need to uh, do a little test run and uh, see how my settings are so I can make adjustments um, for my leather. But there it goes. It just skived the living crap out of that piece right there. And um, hopefully you can, yeah, you can see it on the video pretty well. Uh, but anyway, it does a great job. It doesn't damage the outside of the leather or anything. Um, this is a presser foot right here, kind of like your sewing machine has. You can pick it up, put your material under it, push it down, and then when you hit go on the, the uh, when you hit the gas pedal down there, it's going to feed it through. So, let's do one more just to make sure that that wasn't a fluke, and we are 
set up pretty good. Might be a tiny bit thin, so let me back that off. Let me grab another little scrap here. So I'm just backing off the uh, the height of the presser foot, um, and then that will make it to where my skive's not as, as deep and the leftover leather's not as thin. Now we're perfect. We're taking about two thirds of the, the um, leather off and we're going about uh, five eighths of an inch in, and that should be plenty for this project. So let's get to Scott. I'll show you um, one of these machines, um, like any good leather working machine, they're not cheap, they are an investment. Um, but this one is worth its weight in gold and time saved and consistency. So, um, I'm going to do all three of these pieces and then I'm going to do both of these pieces too. I'm going to go kind of slow so I can get around that corner there. I don't have to try to go around the corner. I could just do straight runs down the sides of it, but why not get fancy? So there we go. In less than a minute, I did that piece. Uh, we had a bag making class here a couple of months ago. 17 uh, ladies were here and we made, we skived 17 bags in less than an hour. Um, and these were big bags. They were the overnight bags um, that we, we uh, have patterns for. Um, and so yeah, it was really impressive how many we got done in a short amount of time. So there's two of those. Now this one, I'm gonna be a little bit more careful because of course it's not as rigid since we've done some cutting on it and stuff. So I just need to be cognizant of that and then keep this piece out of the blade and stuff like that. I always told everybody if I had to leave here today and I could only take one machine with me, it would be the Class 26 sewing machine. But the more and more I use this skiver, <laughs> I'd have a hard time leaving either of those two machines behind. All right, now these will be easy because I'm just going to do the long ends of them for now. And then uh, once we get closer to assembly, I'll end up doing these short ends so that I can fold them over and make a nice rolled edge where the gussets meet. some of that out down there sometimes it gets stuck in the blade and that can cause some heat and friction heat and friction are never good with leather all right almost done last piece all right there we go scabbed up the entire bag um, we are going to pause the video so I can rearrange the camera back over at my workstation and, uh, yeah, start assembly. All right, welcome back. We're back at my desk. Um, so I have here a number five black nylon zipper. I'm using black because I think it looks best with this leather that we've picked out. Um, and then I have a small black nylon what's called a dress zipper we're going to use the dress zipper on that little pocket on the side and then we'll use this this larger zipper to go across the top of the bag um, so we need to uh, get ready to install uh, these pieces all right so we're gonna um, we'll start with a big piece of zipper on the gusset piece okay and again, we're going to look at two, our two gussets and see if one of them happens to be prettier than the other one. If it is, then that is the one we're going to use for the top because that will be seen way more than the bottom. Um, these two are pretty even. Again, this is an embossed side, so it will have way less imperfections than a uh, like a natural, actual bison uh, hide would. Um, so, yeah. All right, so what I'm going to do is... 
our zipper is going to end up being, let's just go ahead and measure this right here. And this doesn't have to be an exacting science by any means. You can make your zipper longer or, um, or you can have it stop up here at the corners. I like it to go around the corner a little bit and then down some. And to me, that just uh, kind of fits the project better. So here we're looking at 15 inches showing of the zipper. All right. Um, again, it doesn't need to be that long. Um, I believe the project actually was made for a 12 inch zipper that would pretty much, um, that would stop a little bit higher up here, uh, up on the corners, but I, uh, I want to do it this way and I'll show you what. Let me find, I need my punching board again. So now I need to cut out, um, I'm going to do about 16 inches uh, worth of um, worth of room for the zipper because I'm actually taking and sewing the base of the zipper up under the gusset here just to keep it cleaner on the outside. Um, so I'm going to use my handy dandy centering ruler here because that shows me where the middle of this thing is going to be. Because again, it's a two inch wide strap, but I've got a... Um, a, a a uh, one inch mark right there in the middle of my ruler. I'll take my hole punch and punch my hole. So um, again we need to go 16 inches or so because even though I'm going to sew this entire zipper in and go around all this that's actually going to end up inside the bag so that you won't see it. Um, so yeah. So I'm going to go down about 16 inches or so, and I'm going to knock another hole directly in the middle. Right on the edge of my cutting board, too. That's not good. I need bigger cutting boards. Um, okay, now that I'm done with that, I actually am going to grab a roller knife, because that will be the easiest way for me to cut out that center section as one of those, um, like a rotary cutter. Because as I run it down the side of the ruler, it's not going to try to push or pull the uh, leather like the scalpel will. So give me just a second to go grab one of those. All right. Got my rotary cutter. I'm going to use my straight edge. I'm going to put it on the main part of the leather, um, you know, just so it has the best hold for what I'm about to do. As opposed to if I tried to put it over here on the very, the very edge, then it's only holding like three quarters of an inch of, uh, of leather when right here it's holding more of one and a quarter inch. And then I'm also going to, as I progress with my rotary cutter, I'm going to move my hand too because otherwise what can tend to happen is that the, the rotary cutter will force the leather to turn and end up under my ruler. So just little tidbits. And I also want to make very sure not to overcut into my uh, my hole there. I may have to go back and clean that up with a scalpel to cut the very ends. Apparently not. Uh, but anyway, I, you never want to accidentally overcut because then you'll have a nick on the other side of your, your hole. And um, it just won't look as, as clean and professional. All right. Flipped it around. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. Making sure that the leather is nice and straight under here. If you don't have it nice and straight, then your zipper is going to look wavy. All right, here we go. And if you notice, as I move my hand down the ruler, I'm never taking my hand off of the ruler. I'm doing it kind of like an inchworm, and that will help me. Uh, Keep my uh, keep my project in place. All right, like this one, I've got to trim a little bit right there at the very end. There we go. So now we have a slot cut out that we can put our zipper into, and that'll help. Let's see if I can adjust the brightness here and see if that helps any with the 
color. There we go. Okay. So, easiest way I've ever found to do this is I take and put my uh, double-sided tape on the, um, the very edges of the leather here, and then I just stick it on the zipper. I'll pull the zipper nice and tight, pull the leather kind of tight, and stick it down and try to get it as straight as I can and then I'll lightly press it down with my fingers so that the double-sided tape sticks to the zipper. Alright, so I've got some double-sided tape here and I'm just gonna go down both sides of that cutout that I did for the uh, and I do want to make sure that my double-sided tape doesn't go over the edge because there's nothing like seeing that shiny sticky stuff on the outside of your project. So make sure and keep it on the inside of the leather. So, make sure that's stuck down good before I pull the paper off the back of it. This works better if you have fingernails, but I don't ever have fingernails. I guess I should say I don't have long fingernails. I have fingernails just like everybody else. All right. Um, so I'm going to pull this zipper nice and straight and I'm actually going to just line it up with one of the lines on my cutting board here and that'll help me, uh, help me know that it's straight. I'll carefully pick this thing up so the sticky stuff doesn't stick to itself. And I'll lightly lay it down where I think it ought to be. Make any adjustments I need to make. Got that in nice and pressed down. Make some adjustments on this end here. And there we go. Nice and pressed down. Um, that's going to be ready to sew here in a little bit. All right, so we'll set this piece aside and work on this. Um, zipper for the main body okay now kind of the same concept um, this zipper is going to go in that area right there um, as you can see the zipper is too long and that's fine we'll trim it off when we're done um, so I'm going to turn this thing over I will put my double sided tape right along there and then we'll put it on top of the zipper Now there is a little bit of a trick to this one because the bottom of the zipper has to be uh, be able to fold away. Um, show you what I mean here. So I took on this one and I folded the back end of the zipper there so that the top of that little gusset could be right up against it but not covering it because it has to come out when the main part of the zipper uh, or the, other, the top part of the zipper stays folded up into the bag. All right. So when I'm doing this one, like I said, the zipper is too long for the project and that's more than fine. I'm going to use the, the stops that are at the, the opening end of the zipper. Um, I will use those 
and then the the back end of it will just be sewn in down here and we'll just trim it off when we're done and no one will ever 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 see it again okay Alrighty. So, pull the paper off the tape. Line her all up, and we're going to put the very beginning of it right there at the end of the zipper. Press the top part down first, and then I'll come back and do this this bottom part. Like so. Alright, and that's in exactly the right spot. Like I said, I just need this the very tip of the zipper, the very end of the zipper. I know it's kind of dark on the video somehow with all this light. It's still dark. Um probably because I'm using such a dark leather. Sorry. All right, so the end of the zipper is right there at the end of the uh, the opening. All right, now one other little thing I need to do is take the back end of the zipper here and fold it back and put a nice little piece of tape in there so that when I sew it, it'll end up sewn down. Okay, because again, this when this opens, that needs to come out, and it can't do that with that big old tab just hanging out there. Okay, so teeny tiny little piece of tape just to hold that little bit down and then like all of our projects the tape is just a temporary hold we're gonna go back and sew all this together so nothing is just taped on this bag, I promise. All right, so there's that, okay? Now, the other thing we need to do is that small gusset piece that we cut out. It's gonna look like this here. Um, here will be the top of it, okay? You're gonna sew it flesh side to flesh side, okay? And you're gonna sew it, the, it's hard to see the cut. Let me use the template for this, that might make it easier to see. Um, I'll end up sewing the angled side, the angled side of it. Okay, we got a we got a 90 degree side, and then we got about a 25 degree side over here. Um, so I'll sew the angled side right up to the bottom of the zipper up here. All right, and uh, when we go to sew it, we'll sew. This is the back side again. Well, we will sew it on the finished side, but we'll end up sewing up here and around here, then we'll pull it off the sewing machine because we have to fold this over to there before we complete our stitch. All right, so that kind of shows you what we're doing. Um, I can use double-sided tape or I can use uh, some contact cement to hold that on there um, for the stitching. And uh, it doesn't really matter which one I use. They're both going to do just fine to hold this in place while I stitch. So, since the tape's already in front of me, and my glue jar hasn't been opened yet today, which means it's probably glued shut. Just a little tidbit, if you have a glue jar or glue container that you use, and you keep gluing it shut, put Vaseline on the... Um, on the threads and it'll never glue itself shut again and I've told thousands and thousands of people to do this but I've never actually done it to my own glue jar <laughs> so kind of funny all right so I am putting this thing flesh side to flesh side right up against that and then I will check before I start sewing I'll check and unzip the zipper here pull it back and make sure that it's not overhanging by any means Okay, got a couple of fibers overhanging, but it's not overhanging. Trim that up right quick. It's just leather fibers is all it is. I could use a lighter, but I'll probably have to. All right, so we are down to 
assembly. Um, it is time to start putting this thing together. Um, I'll tell you what, I will get this thing ready before I start putting it together. This is that little piece that we cut out um, to hold the D-rings. And all I'm going to do is cut it in half because we have two D-rings. I will leave it this long for now. Um, and then once we've sewn the bag together, I can always trim off the excess. But I would rather have too much than not enough. Um, so uh, it would appear that everything else we're going to do is going to be over by the sewing machine. So I'm going to have to pause the video to move the camera and get everything over to the sewing machine. Um, for this video and this project, we'll be using a Class 26, which is a lightweight cylinder arm sewing machine. You can very easily sew this bag by hand. It just would take a while. Um, and I have three videos to try to get made today, so sewing machine it is. All right, so here we are over here at the uh, Class 26 sewing machine. This is a, a light to medium weight um, cylinder arm sewing machine. Um, <clears throat> available from the Leather Machine Company, which uh, Tandy also is selling these now. Um, so we're going to sew uh, this zipper and gusset on, and then we're also we're going to sew this zipper on. And I'm doing something really rare. For anybody that's watched a lot of my videos, I love like natural colored thread, um, and I love contrasting colors of thread. But I've actually threaded this one up with black thread because I just think it's going to look nice uh, on this project. Um, as opposed to the, the natural color or any other, uh, excuse me, contrasting color. I am going to bring this in a little bit closer and see what kind of view we can get with it. And uh, maybe even bring it down a tiny bit. But my problem is I just don't want my arms in between the camera, of course, and the sewing machine. All right. Me turning off my sewing light will help, so we'll do that. Now, um, first thing I'll do is I'm just going to sew two straight lines just right down the sides of the zipper. I'm not going to go around and across because I haven't set my, uh, I haven't put my zipper slide on there yet. So I'm just going to sew down both sides of it and not do the, uh, not do around the ends. I don't need to lock this stitch in or anything because it's going to be inside the bag, inside of another seam later on. Um, I've got this machine set up pretty, going pretty fast right now because I, uh, I a lot of straight line type stuff. Um, but it does have a servo motor on it, so it'll go as slow as I want it to when I'm going easy on the gas pedal here. All right. I'm just sewing up right along the edge of that, uh, where the leather meets the zipper tape. Just right on the edge of it. These machines are great because, you know, they feed themselves. All you have to do is keep it straight. And it does really well. Um, I do have an edge guide on this machine, but it's flipped up and out of the way right now because really um, there's not a good edge to use for what I'm doing right this very second. All right, there's the first line. Um, made a beautiful stitch, and uh, since it's black, it really it doesn't show up uh, a lot. You know, it's not accented like a lot of the stitching that I like to do. But again, for this project with the darker tones and stuff, I really think it's going to be really nice. I didn't backstitch or anything. Like I said, it's going to be inside the seams of the, the bag, so it just doesn't matter at this point. Now I'm going to do, I've just flipped it around, I'm going to do the exact same thing.
All right, there we go. Both sides are done. Um, that was the easy stitch line. Now I'll move over here to the um, that part of the bag that has a, a zippered pocket on it, and I'll sew that down. Okay, um, there's a couple of different ways to tackle this. Um, I my personal thoughts are that I'll start right around here. I'll go this way a little bit, and then down and around. Well, no, that's not going to work. Okay, because what you have to do is, you know, once you've sewn this part, when you sew this part right here, um, this has to be folded over. So it's it's actually two parts of, uh, of what we're doing here. So let me uh, rethink this right quick. I'm going to start up here. I'm going to sew out and around the back of this zipper and come down all the way to here. Okay, and then I'm going to pull it out of the sewing machine. I'll fold that over, and then I'll sew that last little bit right there and go back up and connect to where I first began. Okay, so now that all the confusion's out of the way, <laughs> we're going to start out. I'm going to hold my threads, and it doesn't really matter where up here I start. I'm just trying to simplify it to where the most of it I can get is, is sewn together at once, and it'll also help if I... Close the zipper, not as much stuff will wiggle around. So again, I'm going to sew that zipper right up on the edge of the leather to catch it on there. This zipper has the nylon, the, the plastic based teeth, so it's not very, uh, it's not too bad to uh, um, sew around. Uh, when I go around here, um, I can just power through it with the machine. If it had uh, metal teeth on it, then I would actually use the hand wheel when I sewed that area instead of the motor of the machine, um, and that way I could go slower and make sure that. Uh, that the needle didn't just hit one of those metal teeth and break because um, it's not going to break the teeth it's going to break the needle there we go made it up over the zipper with no problem and now we're just going to sew down the bottom half of it gets up onto that gusset I just have to go a little bit slower and make sure that we get everything we're supposed to and I'm gonna unzip a little bit of that zipper just to keep it out of the way all right now we're at the edge of the pocket or the opening so what I'm gonna do is I'll do a 90 degree turn here and we'll just keep on sewing straight down this line Popping noise is me putting a little bit of pressure on this needle and it's hitting the hook underneath. So I need to do what I preach, which is to let the machine do the feeding and not try to feed it myself. Alright, so I'm just going to backstitch it right there. Just at the bottom of that uh, cut for the, the pocket gusset. And I'll pull it off the machine. All 
All right. There we have that. Um, so what I'm going to do next is uh, fold the gusset thingy over right here, and it will sew down to the other side here. Um, so yeah, give me uh, just a minute. I'm gonna I'm gonna pause the video so I can go over there and uh, and take care of that. All right. So again, I just folded that piece over and just stuck it right at the edge of uh, of the the base part there okay and now I'm gonna continue on sewing um, I'm gonna start right here and work my way up and around to there all right get the threads ready here all right and since it's a brand new stitch and I'm not joining it to the other one I just did back here um, I'm gonna have to uh, to lock the stitches in first so we're gonna go in reverse for two stitches there we go and now we'll run forward and I'm just keeping it right up against the edge of the uh, seam there When this is done, I'll press that down and create a really nice fold there. And that way when the bag is closed, that won't try to pop open on that edge. Alright, so I'm coming around um, the end of the zipper here. And uh, remember, I started my stitch right here. So as I get, uh, get to that, I've got to make sure that those two butt up perfectly. So here we are back at our very first stitch and I'm just going to lift my presser foot so I can put my needle right into it so that I can uh, seal off both those stitches. There we go. So the zippers are both uh, sewn down now um, and it's time to start um, actual like final assembly of our, of our project. So I'm going to have to pause the camera and reposition it. Um, over at my glue up table behind me and um, we'll put the pieces together that need to be together for now um, yeah we'll just keep on going with it so be right back all right so we're over here at the glue up table um, first thing I'm gonna do is the very end of this zipper um, I stitched around the base of it there, so it is now um, sealed like it needs to be. And I thought I brought my scissors over here. I'm sorry. All right. So all I need to do now is just clip off the end of it. And uh, there we go. So um, one of these pieces, if you'll remember, we talked about if you had one that happened to be really ugly or something like that, then it could go on the back of this piece. And so I think that one right there, it's not necessarily ugly, but there is a mark that looks like it was probably a scar right there. Um, so I'm going to glue those two pieces together, and that will be one side of the bag. All right, and then after that, we're going to measure up and start running this gusset around it so that we can figure out how far um, around it to make the gusset. So to glue this up, I'm going to use contact cement. I'm going to put it on the uh, skived edge of this and then the finished side of this one right here. Um, just kind of the same amount, you know, about a half inch wide or so. And then I'll stick those two together. So there we go. Contact cement is um, absolutely great for a project like this. Uh, I love this stuff because it... It's one of those it's a very permanent solution once it's stuck it's really stuck and uh, so um, I have used uh, the Tanner's Bond the white glue from Tandy um, quite a bit in my uh, my time doing leather work it works fine for this application as well I just still prefer um, contact cement which is uh, it is available at Tandy as well uh, ordinarily, I'd throw a piece of paper down, but I forgot to, and so I'll wait for some of this to dry up, and then I'll just roll it up off my bench. If you try to rub it while it's wet, then you're just going to spread it and make a huge mess, but if you wait until it kind of dries up, it's almost like the consistency of rubber, and you can peel it off. 
So that is what I will prefer to do. Again, building it this way with this center piece here, you don't have to. Um, I mean, if you didn't have this piece glued onto the back of this one, then when you open this pocket, you're basically, now you're in the main body of the bag. And maybe that's what some folks would want to do. I don't know. Um, I just figure if you're putting your keys or your phone or something like that in there, it's probably easier to uh, not have to wrestle around with everything else to, uh, to grab that item that you need. I do like my pockets. Um, don't know how many of y'all know, but I was in the military. I retired from the army, and it's kind of funny about the whole. I like my pockets. I, uh, for my entire career, I had a hard time because I love standing around with my hands in my pockets, and that's just a no-no in uniform. So, yeah, anyway, if you like uh, standing around with your hands in your pockets, seriously consider <laughs> what you might have to go through in the military. All right, I'm going to let those set for a little bit. I'm going to pause this. I'll let them set for about five minutes, and I'll uh, rub all this glue off my table here. All right, it's been a couple minutes. Got my glue all cleaned off. So we're going to stick these two pieces together nice and careful. I always just kind of start at a corner, make sure it's good and lined up, and then work my way around. Always keeping the surfaces away from each other until they are in place because once it's stuck, it's stuck. Okay, so now the next step is we need to figure out our gussets. All right, so here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to skive down the edges of this one, the bottom gusset. All right, and I'm going to fold them over and they'll be sewn that way uh, so that it'll have on the outside you'll have a nice uh, rolled appearance rolled edge um, and then once i've folded them over and just glued them down because the sewing will come once the final assembly is ready um, i'll fold them over and glue them down and then i'm going to find the center point so give me a second and we'll prepare all those things i've got to go over to the skyver right quick all right i did a nice wide skive on both ends of that I'm going to apply a little bit of glue and I'm just going to fold that over. And again, that'll give it a nice rolled uh, look to the finished part. And that also is where our, uh, our uh, little pieces with our D-rings are going to come up. Um, so scabbing this down nice and thin um, will make sure that with all the layers of leather that are going to be there, that it's not too, too thick to have a sewing issue with. So, all right, I'm going to let that set up for just a second. Um, we will need to pause it again while I let that set up. I apologize. All right, been a couple of minutes. Again, I'm just going to fold this sucker over about a half inch or so and glue it down. Flip it around here, do the exact same thing on the other side. Alrighty. Okay, so here's what we have to do now. We have to find the middle of this. And unfortunately, it is longer than my 18 inch ruler. So, what I'm going to do is I'll measure in, let's say, three inches from each side. 18 minus 3 is 15. And 1, 2, 3. Alright, so now I'll just measure the center of those two, uh, two um, marks I just made. All right. Let 
with a centering ruler that gets pretty easy so there is my exact center you can always just fold it in half to check and make sure you're right or just fold it in half in the first place um, and so there's my mark and I'm folded exactly in half so I feel pretty good about my measuring skills um, sometimes uh, some projects you can't fold them in half like that so um, you know show you both ways right quick all right now speaking of not being able to fold things in half now we got this thing to worry about so once again we need to find the middle of this we need to find the middle on the top and on the bottom Okay, and then the same with the zipper piece. Okay, now this one's going to be a little trickier because what we're finding the middle of is this area where the zipper actually is. So, I'm just marking it on the very edge there and I'm going to transfer that mark onto the back. Um, because about a quarter to three-eighths of an inch of this is going to be under the next layer anyway, the front or the back. So. Alright, and then I need to mark it on the other side as well. Okay. So. Um, what I'm going to do, I've got, uh, I, I use a lot of clips. I do not, when I'm putting gussets of bags together, I don't glue them because if my sew line doesn't cover every bit of that glue, when you turn the bag right side out, you're going to have, uh, quite the mess to deal with as far as, um, you know, lots of glue and stuff in your seam. So we are going to start at the top middle here. And with our uh, our piece, we're going to put it finish side to finish side, but but we'll butt up the uh, middle markings. And we're going to clip this thing down as we go around the project. There's a couple of different kinds of clips. I use a ton of these binder clips right here, but there's also these uh, handy dandy little sewing clips. You can get them on Amazon. Um, our friend Tony Bernier showed us these. Um, these are really nice too, but I kind of, for bigger projects, um, with heavier leather, which this is, I guess you could call heavier leather, when I'm using like garment weight leather, I'll use these little things. But anyway, I'm going to use these because they're easier for me to grab. My gorilla paws. So. Alright, so all I'm doing is just, uh, clipping this sucker up as I go around. Uh, anybody that's watched any of my bag making videos, you, you know exactly what I'm doing. Um, and this will help us find where our gussets will meet so that we can trim them down. Okay, now when I get to a corner, I'm just going to stretch it a little bit and keep pinning it down. Try to do as much of this on camera as I can here. Um, one thing we have not done yet and we can't forget to do is put our zipper slide on here. So just know that, yes, I haven't done it yet. I could have done it by now, but I uh, just hadn't done it yet. But that is still in the plan. Again, we get to the corner, I just kind of stretch it out and pin it down there. And this is doing these corners and stuff is really going to make you love a cylinder arm sewing machine over a flatbed. Because you can roll those corners right over the edge of that cylinder arm as opposed to trying to hold them flat on a flatbed.
All right, and that's going to be far enough because I know that bottom gusset's going to come up at least to where those pins are. All right. So I'm going to turn it over and find my center mark. And I'll do the exact same thing, go in the opposite direction. Now, if you notice, my top gusset is way too long. Um, it goes, it, it just, you know, is all over the place here. I can go ahead and cut a bunch of it off, and uh, that'll save me some, some headache trying to figure out which one of these goes where. Um, as long as I know I'm cutting it off past where they're going to meet. All right, plenty of room. And that'll help me to, uh, to clip this bottom one on. I won't have to work around that top one just lay in there. Okay, once again, get to a corner, stretch and pull. So it looks like there's where we're meeting up, and that's just more than fine. So I will go ahead and pinch all of those together. Oops, sorry, I'm not even on camera. Um, so here's where they're they're meeting. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pinch all those together. When I do this, the, uh, the the top gusset with the zipper actually needs to be on the outside here because that'll be the inside of the bag when it's turned right side out. And I will. Pinch that together right there with a clip, and I'll come over to the other side and I'll do the exact same thing again. Doesn't matter how many clips you pull out, you're going to need more. It's a rule. So here's what I'm going to do now. I have found where these are going to meet, and I'm going to mark all of that with a marker. So I'm going to mark it on the inside of this, I'm going to mark it on the edge of that, and I'll mark it on the inside of the back side here. This is actually a die pen. That's why it's kind of spreading, but that's fine. Okay, so I'll mark it here on the inside here on the edge and here on the other side okay now the reason I did all that was so that I could take it back apart now um, it's, it stinks but that's how you put a gusset on a bag and make sure it fits once you have a pattern down as long as you're always using the same leathers it'll always fit the same way so I'm going to take all these clips off and I'll uh, pause the camera while I do that um, and get ready for the next step. Alright, time for that magical time of putting a uh, zipper slide on your zipper. Um, it has to be done from the back side because we already uh, cut the leather off um, even with the zipper and that's fine. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate the zipper right here and I'm actually going to clip off about a quarter of an inch of one side of it and that'll help you to line it up to get the slide on there. Okay, now um, getting the slide on is always fun. I, 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 I struggle with it every single time but basically I'll put it on the long side and uh, till the teeth are in the in the slide itself then I'll force it onto the short side there and then get it pushed up on there and that actually worked out uh, pretty well <laughs> that's probably one of the fastest ones I've ever done so let me break apart some more of it here so I can zip it back up and then we're almost where we can grab that 
pull. All right. So there it is. Zipped. <laughs> um, again, that's probably the fastest I've ever done a zipper. I um, uh, I don't struggle with them. They just take me a while. So, all right. Um, so there's that. Now we need to get ready to put our D-rings in it as well. Okay, so we're going to take our, uh, our D-ring and just kind of put it in the center of our strap and we'll end up gluing both halves of this strap to each other like that. Okay, and we'll do that two times. So I'll grab the glue. And this one doesn't have to be all perfect and anything. I'm just going to kind of slather some on there in the middle. Same on this end. That'll hold that D-ring long enough to get her sewn down. Same here. And I'm going to leave these tabs nice and long and then I'll just trim them after the whole thing's sewn together. Alright. So we're going to have to give that a minute as usual. Uh, so I'll pause this and uh, we'll come back. We'll put the D-rings on and then we'll uh, glue up our gusset piece and we'll sew it. Alright, got those ready, so we're just going to, these are one inch D-rings. Just going to press those two sides together there. And then we'll do the same on the other. There we go. Okay, now... We need to glue these to the, side, the ends of these, like so, where that uh, D-ring is just barely protruding out the end of it. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit of glue if I were on my, uh, my cutting table I'd just use double sided tape for all this but I'm not over there so that's where all the double sided tape dispensers are. Put some glue on there. We'll do the same for the other side. And once again, I'll pause the camera while we wait on glue to dry. All right, glue's dry. Again, I'm going to put this on there, and I want it to be nice and straight. Um, otherwise, it'll definitely be crooked on the outside of your bag, and you don't want that. Okay. So there she be. Almost looks like a, a drawdown strap or something. Okay, so now we are going to clip this piece to it. I'm not going to glue it. I'm just going to clip it on. And I'm going to sew across that seam right there. And then I'll do the exact same thing on the other side. And then we will uh, put our bag together for, for final assembly. So I'll line my, my uh, dots up there where I'd marked those areas. And uh, I'm not going to clip it up here. I'll clip it down here, and that way um, I, I can leave the clips in place while I sew it. And uh, this is just two real simple lines um, to sew. So I am going to, oh, and then unzip your zipper past that point where those meet. Um, but uh, this is a real simple line to sew on each of these. So I'm not going to bother moving the camera over there um, just for sewing two little lines and then coming right back. Um, so, yeah. So there it is. I'm just going to sew down right across there and right across there. Grab that. All right, folks. Um, so I sewed those two pieces together. I'm going to trim off my, uh, my threads. Now my gusset is one piece. 
and uh, it's time to clip it all back up to the bag like it was a while ago. Alright, so I need to turn it inside out, making sure that the bottom uh, or that the zipper is at the top of the bag. Okay, and I will start clipping it right back up to how it was before, one side at a time. You can clip the entire bag together, both sides uh, to it. Um, I normally don't. Um, just because it's a little easier for me to uh, to sew it together uh, one side and then clip up the other side but if you know that your patterns just dead on and your your all your measurements are good then I mean you can easily clip it all up and sew both these pieces both these sides together at once um, I'm pretty sure of my measurements but I'm just you know I don't like to get a uh, get too overzealous on this stuff Right. So I'm doing, I started with the bottom center mark and I'm going around the corners here and then I'm just clipping up that, that side right there. But then I'm going to skip over and we'll go to the top center mark. I'm sorry, I'm working a little off camera there. Uh, then we're going to go to the top center mark and we'll start on it and work our way back down. That way everything stays nice and centered and it doesn't... Uh, it doesn't uh, get to where the bag is, is crooked or askew. Okay, so now, like I said, I'm gonna take this top center mark here and I'll go ahead and clip it together. And that'll keep me kind of square going around and make sure that everything lines up well. And if you find that it's not, you know, lining up exactly how it ought to, then you can always make your little adjustments, you know, to the right or to the left if you need to. Um, you just don't want to move those center points. The last corner is always the hardest to clip up. I don't know why. Alright. We're about done clipping this up. Uh, pause the camera and we will be over at the sewing machine again next to uh, put the side, sew the side onto the gusset. Alrighty. So we'll be back again. Sorry about that. In the middle of moving the camera and I unpaused it. Alright, so here we go. Uh, normally I'll start, you know, in the middle of a, a flat spot and not on a corner to uh, start sewing something like this. And I'm just going to slowly sew my way all the way around it, staying about three-eighths of an inch or so in, and um, pulling clips off as I go. Like I've said, you can easily hand sew this, but you don't have to. You can usually go pretty fast along um, all the straight sides. It's once you get into the corners that you've got to be really careful and make sure you're getting all the layers in there because they do try to pinch up on you. 
you're taking two objects that used to be flat and making them rounded so you got to be careful with it okay almost around one corner here pulling clips as we go back onto a straightaway we can speed up a little bit and then when uh, where these two gussets join up I do want to make sure that the walking foot just walks right up over that seam and keeps on a trucking Sometimes I accidentally get too close to a clip. It happens. Line those edges up again. One of those clips slipped a little bit. On a straightaway so I can speed her back up again. another corner. Those are the fun times. Okay, once again, I got to make sure where these uh, the top and bottom gusset meet that the machine's going to just walk right up onto that seam. There we go, just did fine. Back on another little straightaway here, almost to the home stretch. This front side is a tiny bit more difficult than the back side because it has uh, the two layers um, on the front panel, you know, where we sewed that pocket shut. But it's not that bad, especially if you skived it well. There we go. Got back to the original stitch and just went right back over the first probably four stitches because uh, I let my foot get the best of me there. <laughs> and there it should be. Um, one thing you want to check for is you'll kind of run your finger all the way around that seam and make sure you got all the layers into every bit of it. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the camera. I'm going to go over there and I'm going to clip up the other side following the exact same guidelines okay you know starting at my centers and working my way out um but what i have to do first you have to make very very good good and sure that you unzip this enough to get your hand into it otherwise you're gonna have a real fun time turning that thing right side out i promise so i'm gonna pause this and that's what i'll do 
Okay, so here we have the other side of it all clipped together, ready to go. And um, just going to start at one end and, or one side and work my way around just like I did a while ago. So here we go. Corners are always fun. Second side is no different. The biggest thing you want to do is make sure you don't get a crease sewn into your corner though. Because then that will show up as like a bubble on the outside of the bag and it won't look right when it's all uh, turned right side out. I'm getting over here where the um, that D-ring is inside there and it's trying to push me away from the machine a little bit so I've just got to finagle it under there right. If you screw something up and uh, a layer doesn't get sewn in like it ought to, complete your bag. Go all the way around it. Don't stop where you are. Keep a note of where it is, and then when you come back, it's much easier to uh, just re sew that one section once the rest of the bag is already together. Like right now, I just got off track somehow, that bottom seam walked right out from under me. So I'm going to keep sewing and then uh, it'll be a good teaching point to show you what I'm going to do. This is why I don't edit videos because I don't want to edit that out. I want you to see that it happened happened to me, it can happen to you, um, and then I want you to see how we fix it. That way we all get better together. Love that long straightaway. Another corner. Okay, back where the seams meet again for the uh, gusset. Looks like we're still good on this side, but that is the place where that happened on the other side.
last corner. Usually if you're going to have a problem, this will be where it is, just because you're all excited that everything's gone well. It's almost like life. Okay. There we go. All right, so we went all the way around it, but again, we've got a big area to fix over here. It was a, this was kind of a problem. So hopefully I can fix it without, check all that out. That is a lot of missed area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clip that sucker free right there and right there, I'm going to realign all that, and then I'm just going to sew it up again. Um, you can clip all those threads out, but what I'm going to do is make sure that I sew just on the inside of those threads so that, um, so that there's not holes when I turn it right side out. If I sewed on the outside of those threads, then when I turned it right side out, you would see the holes where they were. And uh, we don't want that. That would, that would show somebody else that we made a mistake, and that's just between, you know, uh, you and me right now. All right. A couple more stitches down here. Okay, so I got all those stitches pulled out. Theoretically, all I need to do is go back and I'll start where the stitching's good here, work my way in just a little bit and run down that line, making sure that that back side is actually where it's supposed to be this time. I will use a clip to hold it into place. Okay. Make sure, make sure when you start out though, you've got to start in that stitching. Otherwise you'll have, when you turn it right side out, you'll see where that, that, uh, that joint is. But if you start right in the other stitching, you'll be okay. So. All right, so I've got it in one of the old stitch holes. Okay, now I'm gonna run just to the inside of that old stitch making sure that my layers are actually lined up like they ought to be this time. And when I say just inside, I mean it is barely inside there. It really is kind of running just right alongside of it. And then when we turn it right side out, unless I've done something terribly wrong, shouldn't be able to tell this ever happened. And I'm not guaranteeing that I hadn't done something terribly wrong. All right, so we're past uh, we're past the area where the problem was. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to put these uh, the stitches back in the exact same stitch holes as before, and that will ensure that this was seamless and that you won't see it when I turn it right side out. If I did it right. <laughs> All right, so there's what we did right there. That, that bottom stitch line is the one that we did to correct it. On the other side, it almost looks like it never happened if it wasn't for that right there. Okay, so we're going to go back over to the table, and then we'll do what I call the moment of truth, which is when we turn this thing right side out and see if we screwed it up or not. So be right back. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, Clip off all my threads. If there's anywhere that you um, have an excess of, uh, like right here, these corners got a little bit away from each other as I sewed them, you can always just take your scissors and kind of trim off that excess there. And as a matter of fact, I mean, if you did nice wide sew lines, you can trim off anything you want and uh, get them, you know, to where they're closer, the tolerances are a little less, whatever. Um, just so that the inside of the bag looks a little bit nicer. 
Um, you could line this bag. Uh, I keep meaning to do a video on lining bags and and doing the binding that would that would require. But uh, anyway, let's go ahead and turn this one right side out. This bag is called the Madison, which is actually my niece's name. I don't think she knows that I named a bag after her yet, but I think I'll make her one for Christmas. All right, so. We're going to turn the bag inside out, or right side out. Uh, we'll just start with a corner and kind of start pulling. Don't put a lot of pressure on your zipper area. Um, try to go easy on it. Um, you're not going to, you most likely aren't going to hurt it or anything, but it's no, no use in risking that if you don't have to. And this bag is fairly easy to turn right side out compared to some of the ones we've made. So... Out on the corners. All right. Flip the top of it right side out here. And then, real importantly, you'll want to go along and fold along that edge so that you get that nice square on the top that you need. Okay. I'm really glad that I uh, opted to use the black thread on this. I think it really looks nice and classy. Now the only other thing to do for this bag is to make a little strap for it. Um, not going to bother with that on the video. Um, basically you would measure up you know, how long you want your strap to be for the wearer. Whether they're going to be uh, you know, wearing it as a crossbody or um, just over the shoulder. Um, Real simple, it just needs to be a strap with two uh, swivel hooks on the ends and um, you can rivet it, you can Chicago screw it, you can sew it, uh, you can make it out of the same leather. Um, the one I will make for this one will be made out of this russet leather um, and that'll be just the really nice accent to, to set it all off. And uh, yeah. So again, um, this template is only for uh, Tandy Leather. I won't be selling it in my store. Um, or on my website. Uh, so if you want it, you've got to go see our friends over there and get it from them. And uh, this has been a really fun build. It's a nice little bag. You really could make one fairly quickly if you're not trying to explain it all to a camera. And uh, yeah. Uh, until next time, I'm uh, Aaron Heiser of Maker's Leather Supply working with Tandy Leather on uh, the Madison crossbody bag. Have a great day.